Akotompa, who represents the second respondent's legal team, on Monday continued with his cross-examination of uh, Mr. Johnson as Edwin Ketia. It focused mainly on confronting him with videos of various leaders of the NDC making statements that Mr. Kotampa said leads to one conclusion that they believe that Mr. Mam had won the election, yet when they filed a petition in court, they are seeking relief that suggests that no one won the election. They also saw the bits related to the total valid vote cast. You know that the EC had indicated that the figure of 13.4 million that the EC chairperson mentioned in the declaration was done in error and rather 13.1 million. Was the actual figure and so there was a bit of a back and forth between uh, Mr. Kotoampa and Mr. Isedu Ketia on that score and asking him to make some calculation after which the panel had some questions through Justice Yawapil. My Lord, the NDC had organized several demonstrations with three main objectives. One, please have not asked you the killing that. of innocent please. voters at polling stations by security officers and nothing please, seemed to be happening answer the my NDC question. made uh, uh, the, that was one of the purposes of the of the press conference the other purpose of the press conference please i have not asked you the purpose so answer my question please and don't be taking can you restate don't your, be taking your instructions from you know lawyers on this side please <laughs> Uh, uh, please, let's observe. Please, please. Decom, please, please. <laughs> My Lord, I yeah, know what we, I'm we talking about. We are closer about. to them than you. Yeah. We've not witnessed anything. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Yes, please answer my question and don't, you had the opportunity to write your witness statement. So now you answer the questions. You understand? Please, I'm asking the question again and I answer according to my ability and what I consider to be the answer to the question. I'm saying that interspersed between these press conferences, yes, the NDC, Organize a series of demonstrations, the object of which was to. Tin is loaded. You see, it is well, double barrel. Can't well. you break them? Organize a number of demonstrations. Is that so? Yes, we did. And one of the clear objectives of these demonstrations was that the petitioner had won the elections and the EC should not subvert the will of the people. My Lord, the objective that relates to the presidential elections was that the results as declared were flawed. And the commission itself had accepted that no, no, no. the results were flawed and that's why they kept changing the figures. All the figures that were mentioned as the valid vote cast and all those things. You were saying uh, if the figures were correct, if the figures were correct, and that there were inconsistencies in the figures. I want to ask you. Now, in your own calculation, what were the total valid votes cast in the presidential elections on 7 December 2020? In your own calculations. My Lord, those calculations are uh, reserved for a meeting for us to reconcile the figures because the, the first respondent herself keeps changing the figures. And so it says, excuse why me, you bring your... Excuse me, Mr. Yes. 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 help the court. You see, when you started giving evidence, you said you had all the representatives across the 275 constituencies. You said you put agents as, uh, to, to use the... Yes, and they were to... I mean, collect the figures. You said it. Then he's asking you that probably from that, what figure did you get? You. You. My Lord, I haven't brought that figure to court. Okay. Then, from your own calculations, 
how much, what were the valid votes cast in favor of the petitioner? To your knowledge. My Lord, when we discovered this discrepancy, it was difficult to even know which one so You don't know, you just answer. You don't know. I don't have them here. Okay, then the last one. What figures from your own calculations did the second re re uh, respondent get as the total valid votes cast in his favor? My Lord, I don't have those figures here. Thank you. That's what uh, the various legal teams spoke to the press at the close of proceedings on Monday. An exposure on the lack of candor. You heard the three questions that the bench asked. That for all that you have said, when you finished your coalition, what were your results? When you finished your coalition, what were the results that the petitioner got? When you finished your coalition, what were the results that the second respondent got? And it was, I, I believe it would be very surprising to the millions of NDC supporters across the country who were egged on by the same team that they had numbers to prove they had won. Now here in court, when the bench asks those questions, they say that they did not come to court with any of those numbers. They are not still able to put any numbers before the court, despite all that they had said. And we are here challenging the EC on its own figures. Its own figures. What are those figures? There's the 9th of December, there's the 10th of December, so-called correction, and there's also the figure in their paragraph 24. And then today we realize that even in some of the constituencies, and they, gave a, they themselves brought out the example, Techiman South, they are errors. So if you ask us, what are our own figures? How are we going to get our own figures based on all these flawed sheets and different figures? And so we stand by what we are saying that based on her own declaration, nobody got more than 50%. Hearing continues. So on Tuesday morning, Dr. Michael Pesa White will be in the witness box reporting for joint news from the Supreme Court. My name is Joseph Akable. So that's how things went down on Monday. Joseph Bakable uh, putting that report together for us. Let's have a conversation. That, let's analyze uh, what has happened with this election petition. My guest joining me via Zoom, Kojoga Daudu, is a lawyer. He's a member of the NDC's legal team. Also, Dr. Poko Dusei, he's also a lawyer and a member of the NDC MPP, I beg your pardon, communication team and Justice Abdullah is a law lecturer. He's with the UPSA School of Law. A very good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning, um, Mamavi. I trust you're doing well. I am very well, Justice. Uh, are you 100% well yourself? I'm, I'm sure I'm close to 80%. Um, okay. So there'll be intermittent coffins and stuff. Great. Um, and so you may have to pardon me for that. We'll deal with that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Poko Desai, can you say hello back to me so I, I can check your, your sound level? Hello. Yes, uh, Dr. Poko Desai, I did hear you. Efo Kojoga Daudu, can I hear your hello? Hello. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining, for, for joining me uh, and of course for being on the AM show. I want to start off uh, maybe we cannot help ourselves. You are all lawyers and you've had people in the box before, I guess. So when you're cross, when you're doing cross-examination, what are you essentially looking out for? I probably would want to start with you. Uh, let's just say maybe Dr. Poko Desai. Right. Good morning, uh, Mama V, uh, to your viewers and listeners. Uh, Cross-examination mainly is supposed to achieve um, the purpose of you either discrediting the witness who is on the stand uh, in the witness box or um, putting your case across um, so that you undermine their case uh, when you do that. 
So essentially, when the lawyers for the second respondent got the opportunity, that's what they sought to do. Um, first, to confront uh, the witness with his past um, activities so that he'll be discredited at someone who should not be taken serious because all this why he claimed um, with other um, officials that um, the petitioner had won. And when he came to court, the story is different. Uh, the other aspect also was that he was made to appreciate that no matter how you twisted figures, definitely the outcome of uh, the results wouldn't change. The second respondent will get at least 50% as required by the 1992 constitution. So basically that was what was achieved uh, yesterday uh, by Mr. Buto mm. Okay, and you've concluded there. So let me go to Kojoga Daudu and also ask, first of all, what would you be looking out for during cross-examination and whether or not your witness did justice to your case? Oh, exactly. Um, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers also. Uh, let me add to what my colleague, my learned friend also said. When it comes to the purpose of cross-examination, it's also to find out whether he has the person who is testifying has a personal knowledge of the case, what is happening, or what has been brought. Now, whilst he said about credibility, also your opponent, let me say the respondent, whilst cross-examining is also to put their case forward because the witness or the petitioner has a case. He's looking for some relief. So he has made his case in his witness statement. So you want to contradict that and also put your case forward. That's what we saw that the lawyer for the second respondent was trying to put their case with the figures that no matter what you do, it will be insignificant. And he has crossed the threshold. That is the 50% threshold as a constitution dictate. Mm. Now, whilst you are doing cross-examination, also the witness would also want to state his case, that this is the case that I brought. So if you see yesterday, when the respondent, second respondent lawyer was put into him the figures, he was telling the court that the reason why I came to court was the unconstitutional, the unconstitutionality of the declaration. That is one of the reasons I have come. And secondly, the mathematical error calculating, when you put all the figures together with that of the other presidential candidates, you will get more than what they have said or the percentage wise, it will be over 100%. I think that is the point the petitioner's witness was also putting across. Mm. So the purpose, to just summarize, the purpose of cross-examination is maybe to attack the credibility of the person that is not a credible person. He cannot be taken seriously. It's also to put your case across as the respondent or defendant. You also put your case across him. That was why we saw that the second respondent's lawyer was trying to bring their evidence that they are going to use the witness statement to use it through him. Okay. He that too. Yes, he that too. The uh, position of the law was that you can put your case across by using your evidence. You tender it to him. When we say you tender is you give it to him to look at it and admit it. The court will admit it through him that, yes, he's seen it, he's identified. But I think as the court itself has also indicated, there are some challenges with uh, what we now call witness statement, where witness statements simply means that what you were going to sit in the box to say, now you reduce it and write it. Mm. So whilst it is written, you add all the documents that you are supposed to sure. 
So when you add the documents, it, it has to be determined at pre-trial whether they'll be used. Okay. But because so, it was not done, those are the challenges. That's mm. why you continue to hear that Mr. Chukata gets up and says, as it is now, it is not yet evident. Yes. But the court said, yes, we know it is not yet evident, but whether that can be admissible or not. So mm. it is the same point of law all the opposing sides okay. were arguing so to, about. To a large yeah. extent, just briefly, you were satisfied with your witness? You, did he do good to the petition that you put forward to the court? Yeah, yeah exactly, because... He, the, I, I, like I summarized it, the two issues or the three issues that we took, and we said that one, the unconstitutionality of the declaration, two, we said there was the mathematical error, and three, the bias, the bias. Okay, all right. The we EC has displayed. Okay. And we the circumstances. So he I'll, has I'll come to clearly. All right, great. I'll, I'll come to the other matters, but let me talk to Justice Abdullah. There was uh, some re-examination, and that's why I, I, I want us to concentrate a little bit. We saw Mr. Chachichikata uh, try to explain a few things, uh, but on the issue of Ayin Suano, uh, we know that the court did not allow. Uh, can you also give us a bit of education in terms of the importance of re-examination? Well, uh, essentially, when a party is allowed, um, well, uh, when a party is called upon to re-examine um, his witness, um, he's simply supposed to um, untie the knot that we, um, that occasion that during the um, cross-examination stages, assuming there were any form of ambiguity. In fact, um, then this would be an opportunity to demystify and indeed explain those ambiguities. But what should be clear is that re-examination is not the time for a person to re-argue his case or re-establish his case or in another or sometimes, um, as we put it, to clarify, I mean, to um, um, attempt to on, uh, do the necessary corrections to the damage caused to, to his case. Most people would want to take advantage of doing the re-examination to better their case when they realize that the cross-examination didn't go in their favor. But um, I think lawyers are all clear in their minds that that is not the, um, the purpose of mm. re-examination. Mm. It is simply to ensure that if there were any ambiguities, um, give an example, by way of time, let's say the person said, oh, he came, um, at five, at five, um, um, the, the, or the declaration were, were made um, at five, at, at five. Now, clearly, this five could be a morning five or evening five. Now, during re-examination, you'll be allowed to clarify what this five means. Is it five as in five p.m. or five as in five a.m.? Okay. But so beyond this one, you are not allowed to re-examine. Mm. So. Um, yeah, as usually happens. Okay. Once you realize a lot of things went bad during um, cross examination, most lawyers would insist on re-examining just so they can have the opportunity to, to um, as it were, um, um, better their case and do away with all the bad notes that I mean, all the bad evidence that were brought during the mm. cross examination. The but, last. Um, you need to be clear. That is not a essential okay. purpose. Justice, I want you to begin this for me, and I'll go. I'll go back to our other lawyers uh, who are also standing by. The last three questions from Justice Apeu. Uh, in your own calculation, what was the total valid vote cast? Figures for Mr. Mahama and figures for uh, Mr. Kufuado. How much of a you know a contribution uh, is this to the case itself? The questions that the judge asked. Really, um, let's um, once again um, accept that the the bench is allowed um, to also ask questions, as it were, clarify issues. Um, they are not supposed to be doing the case for either of the parties for them, but they are indeed allowed to step in and clarify the issues that they feel are, um, need clarification. And so that is allowed, and so nobody should be thinking that um, it's, it's, it's normal for people to start thinking that what is a bench now the lawyers for 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 the respondents or what 
but we should we should be clear on that first. Now, second, the three questions for me, um, if you look at the issues that were set down for trial, um, uh, are germane because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the determination of those questions would be the deciding factor as to whether the person declared the president is indeed the president of the Republic of Ghana or not. Because at the end of the day, the whole thing, the whole suit that we are presently witnessing comes down to one issue. Is the person in the office of the president, the president of the Republic of Ghana? If the answer to that question is a valid yes, then the whole suit comes to nothing. So this is why these three questions were so essential. Now, to be fair, I was expecting these questions to come from the respondents rather than coming from the from the bench. I I, I was seriously hoping for those questions from the bench because I mean from the from the respondents' angle rather than allowing the the the, the bench to ask these essential questions. But these, I think for me they are the most important of all the questions mm. that were asked. Indeed, no wonder it has become the highlight of almost every discussion because really. That's where, I mean, that's what we all want to know. Is Nana Akufuado the president of the Republic of Ghana? If the answer is yes, then the whole, I mean, the other matters in the suit may be matters that would help in policy um, issues mm. going forward. Okay. Uh, but Let not to tilt the balance of the presidency. Okay. Let me, another person's favor. Okay, great. Let me get a quick reaction to that, uh, Dr. Poko Edusei. Uh, you know, Justice Abdullah says that he expected those three crucial questions to come from your side. Well, uh, Mamabi, uh, I, I think that's his opinion. And uh, we as uh, lawyers for the second respondent also have a strategy. Um, last week, we spoke about strategy in terms of litigation. We had these questions in our minds. In fact, those are what I call the juggler. Uh, they actually undermine the entire evidence of uh, Mr. Stephen Katia uh, going forward. Because when they were coming to court, the claims they came out with was that uh, no one crossed the 50% threshold, minimum threshold. And throughout, they had failed to give any figures as to what they themselves even got when they were given uh, copies from the polling stations to constituencies to region, uh, the copies they had, when they tabulated it, the figures they got, they had not put it out. We have a strategy. We decided not to ask these questions because um, after the case is closed, we are going to have what you call um, addresses, right? We are going to write written submissions and file it for the court to consider. And insofar as he has failed to provide evidence we will not urge him when uh, what evidence you you have for you to affirm that from, uh, opinion that you uh, no one got uh, more than 50 percent so we we'll then bring it out in our submission that when the petitioner and his witnesses came to court in this case the petitioner has not even come uh, when the witnesses testified none of them was able to give a figure that actually contradicts that of the Electoral Commission. So on the face of it, when the official body has given figures and you have failed to provide any country evidence to um, ask it where to contradict it, it means that the official act that was done by the Electoral Commission to hold, because in this case, there's nothing contradicting it. So our strategy was that we we're going to address um, the judges on it, that they don't have any figures. They just came here with conjectures and meant that they wanted to basically come and pursue their case through that of the Electoral Commission. Mm. So if you don't have your own figures, uh, you couldn't have therefore formed a reasonable basis to say that uh, no one crossed 50 percent uh, minimum threshold. And therefore, the figures that had been declared by the Electoral Commission were germane, they were the true figures, and that's the official body that can actually declare uh, numbers. Okay. And an additional addition to that is that, you know, when the video 
of the declaration was even played out. Realize that certain figures were mentioned by the woman on the 9th of December, right? So that's why the accident the TLS issue of internal inconsistency came out. Um, when you give a body of a narrative, and they mentioned that the first uh, contestant, in this case, um, uh, President Kufuado, got 6.7 million. That of um, uh, President Mahama got 6.2 million. In fact, when Otokono even conducted the press conference, he said that they got uh, 6.1. So it means that at that time, they even didn't have the figures when they were declaring their 50.15 uh, victory. So they didn't have that figures. But the Electoral Commission had the ultimate figures and said that you even got more than you had even declared in your press conference. It was 6.2. When these figures were mentioned by the Electoral Commissioner, the summation of the figures was not going to give you six, uh, 30 million, 470 something. No, it was going to give you 13 million 121. So if they themselves had summed up the figure, they wouldn't have come with uh, joined these claims that uh, because the summation was wrong, therefore everything that we did on December 7 by going to uh, our polling stations, we are standing in the sun to kill, to be rendered, as you say, uh, brutal full men. Okay, let but me. Mm -hmm. How matters are actually succeeded on. You don't just pick a little bit of an entire story and use it as a claim and thinking that that will substantially change the outcome of, of a results which the Ghanaians actually gave to uh, President Let Obama. me go to uh, let me go to Kojoga now. Do those three questions uh, raised what what we've been talking about did it show what the judges were thinking Um yeah mama before I even get there I I think that whilst we are doing some public education let's uh, let's be a little bit deep cross. I think when he uses the malignant friends join these claims in the court, I, I think that it's not fair to um, the petitioner and the lawyers. I, I imagine um, that it, it, because it was used in the courts and there was nothing said yeah, against but, it, that's why but, but the court itself, he repeated the it. The court itself has spoken that at least we are lawyers. If the people on the street can use there's a language that it's uh, deemed right what we use in lang uh, in court so that's that's mine now let me come to those three questions now the three questions that was asked by the bench wanted to see the figures that we have it all tells you that they are going thinking along the way that if we had come to court and we are saying that there's declaration was wrong and it was unconstitutional. We should have added figures. That is not our case. The relief we have put before the court is that what is the actual declaration? And if the ninth declaration and the subsequent changes, correction that have been made, what is the figure? Now, if you use the figure of the ninth, 9th December, if you put it, we are saying that it will not, the activities leading to that declaration will mean that nobody. So it tells you that the bench was expecting or is expecting that we put figures. And we are saying the official figures that has been put by the person who has the responsibility to declare, it's not right. And the person has also come to admit so the essential issue would be now, by the mistakes that they have made and the rest, does it affect the validity of the results that she declared? I think that that is the, the main of our case that we have put, and I'm sure that it is coming out. That is why figures were not put in to go and say that we have these figures and these figures contradict. We have come and looking at the constitutionality of the behavior and constitutionality of the declaration. So that is why the judges asked that, or the respondent was asking that, you don't have the figures which contradict what the Electoral Commission was doing. Mm. And we are saying that what the Electoral Commission did was wrong, and they themselves have even admitted that. So I think for me, the issue, Jermaine, is that 
if it was wrong, should they have admitted? Does it affect the validity of the election? I think that's the that's the essential. Okay. Now, you see, um, where they were saying that we declared and said that the petitioner has won the election and we declare him, that was not the case. If you look at the video that was played, we said and categorically that we have 140 seats in parliament. By what we have, the calculation 140 seats. Now let me give you some understanding to that 140 seat, why it's reduced to 137. By our calculation, what we knew, Techima Sap was part of it, Sefi also was part of it, Zabzugu was part of it. That makes it the 140. You will realize that these results were not declared. The parliamentary were not declared. Then on the 8th, we didn't hear anything from the Electoral Commission. On the 9th, nothing happened. Then on the 9th, evening of 9 to 10, these three constituency I'm mentioning, they did not do collation. Then that is where we realized that the military or security personnel got involved, forced the Electoral Commission to declare the results without that. So, 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 we also had oh. we also had uh, Pito Tokuno, the Deputy General Secretary of your party, in those videos played in courts, uh, where he asked the supporters to go out there and jubilate because you had won the election. Yeah, yes, that's what I'm explaining. That with the 140 we mentioned, we said we were cruising to victory, and people should jubilate because by history we've seen anybody who has majority has the presidency. That's why that press conference was made. But not to declare that Gun Mahama has had this figure and this is the figure Akufado had. Now, those three that we are talking about, Sefibu, also Techima, Saf, uh, Takwa, and Swayim, Zabzuku, are all in court because when they realized that that would be the majority, the security was brought in with that coalition and it was declared. Okay, can, I get, can I get something? Is, let's declare it. Can I, get, can I also get some clarity? So what it means is that you do have your own collated figures, except that your witness didn't have it with him yesterday. Yes, that's, exactly. He said that he doesn't have it with him. But we have the collated results. And the case that we took to court was not about the figures. It was about the declaration and its validity. Okay. And the discretionary power that was used against the petitioner. These are the three things that we took to court. Okay. So subsequently, would you give us the figures? Or it doesn't... Uh, I, it, I'm sure, I'm sure that today, James White gets into the box. Dr. Kwesap White, sorry, gets into the witness box. I'm sure once he's answering questions, what he realized and what he got to know after getting all the figures from the constituencies when they come, or the pooling station when they come, and what happened at the strong room with the figures, I'm sure he's going to eloquently speak on this. Okay. And when the figures matters, the Dr. Professor White will speak on these figures. Okay, Justice Abdullah, are we establishing that before you... Quick, uh, if that's allowed. Okay, please come in, yes. Yeah, just briefly, you know, Pesa White has filed what he's going to say in court. It's just adopted um, as his evidence in chief. Mm -hmm. So if he has not actually intimated about these numbers, there's no way uh, he would then be able to come through the back door and have them. We have a strategy and we will ask him questions that will uh, advance our case instead of asking him to provide us with such additional information. That's why. We didn't ask Mr. Sweden Katia those questions. Well, who knows? And Maybe the bench again could ask those case, three questions. The General Secretary of NDC is more relevant in terms of coordination nationwide. 
of the elections of the NDC than Mr. Pesa White. He okay. was just um, kept in true. one room, what they call a strong room, in which he was just only being fed figures from the ground. Okay, so all right. It's difficult for Pesa White I, I to speak to figures talk. nationwide. Okay. No, 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 he was all right. Somewhere. We will not. I, I disagree with you. It's just now, to say that uh, he's just a mere observer. He was there as a coalition agent. Okay. And Je what does he know? All right, and what gentlemen. What does he know? Okay, gentlemen, thank you. But we want to move the conversation forward. Justice Abdullahi, uh, are we, as, you know, putting forward the, this issue that before you challenge the validity of an election, you must have your own figures? Is that the sense that you're getting? Hello, Mr. Abdullahi. Hello, that is true. Yes. It, yes. Um, sorry, Mamami, can you hear me, please? Okay, so I just want to be sure, I can hear you now, yes. I just want to be sure if... Uh, what we are saying, I guess, coming out from what happened in court yesterday, are we establishing the fact that before you challenge the validity of an election, you need to have your own figures? Um, absolutely not. That is not, that is not supposed to be um, the case, except that each case is taken based on the special circumstances and, 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 and the basis of the petition. It is the basis of the petition that will determine whether the figures are even necessary. Remember, um, it is not, we are not making the argument that if you challenge a particular election, it is solely on the basis that the numbers are not in your favor or the numbers have been tampered with. Um, there, could be, um, there could be a series of grounds based on which you may challenge a particular election. And so um, if you advance your cause based on one of such grounds. For instance, assuming the person um, that you are challenging this um, election, um, your claim is that he's not a Ghanaian, as in accordance with the law. You do not need figures to challenge this. And similarly, if you are challenging the person on the basis that, for instance, he's not of age, um, and that he's, for instance, below 40 years, you do not need the law. If you are challenging the person on the basis that, for instance, he has a criminal record or conviction based on which he cannot be a president of the republic. You do not need figures to challenge that. If you are ch challenging the person on the basis that, for instance, um, that person, um, um, for any other reason, is not qualified to be a president of the republic, you do not need figures to do that. But in this particular special circumstance, it appears that figures are es essential to the determination of who is the president of the republic. So we have to situate this within the special circumstances of this case, and not to make a general assertion that before you challenge an election petition, you need figures to do so. Um, just a final one to you three gentlemen. You're all lawyers. Uh, yesterday, uh, you know, Justice Enin Yabua had a word. Uh, started with Frank Davis and said that the court was not comfortable with the comments uh, after each sitting. Maybe I should start with you, Poko to say, how has the team received this message? Of course, we saw Kojo Ponkroma address the press afterwards, so I guess that you really get the message. But does it bring any, in the absence of any word that's coming in my head, does it bring any form of shame or anything like that to the team? No, not at all. I think it's just a general caution to all lawyers for cases that we do in our lives. I mean, lawyers tend to want to also win the court of public opinion. And um, Rule 38 of our ethic rules is, is there that uh, when you are a lawyer in the case, you don't grant media interviews. We know it, but we still do it anyway. And the admonition that came from uh, the Supreme Court is to the entirety of all lawyers in, in the country that when you are a lawyer on record um, prosecuting the case, don't be granting such media interviews. And you also added that even um, if you are not a lawyer on record, don't go and be in the robes and the wig and all those uh, uh, apparels to be granting the interviews uh, to the media. Isn't, so, isn't, uh, isn't that a test? I think before it... taking that cue, uh, other than that, in the amount we've been touting. Yeah, but, you know, just wanted to say that uh, I remember the judge saying that a person of his caliber force, anybody else, that would have been fine, but for somebody of his, 
of his state should not have done that. Didn't the team think that he was going overboard sometimes with his commentary? Well, uh, not not so, uh, because uh, similar vibes were coming from that of the petitioner side, and they needed to be responded to accordingly. Um, we've taken the cue. I believe they have also taken the cue. And um, going forward, we will abide by it accordingly. We have other very competent individuals who can speak to um, whatever is happening in the Supreme Court. Um, the uh, information minister designate is very eloquent in, in conveying our story. We have other communication persons who can also convey the story, and we will do so accordingly. So yeah. the Ghanaians are well informed about uh, the rules in, in the case of the petitioners. Kajoga Dawudu, the other test, put down your robes and your wigs, but on both sides yesterday at the press conference, you were wearing your robes. Um, no, um, that, that, that is the issue. Um, I think that where uh, it talked about um, being in the case, if you watch right from even 2013, whilst we were doing the case, the lawyers who mentioned their name are uh, on record as the lawyers for the person maybe that time was the respondent and now the petitioners to not speak to the media it is the legal team that some persons among speaks to the media and i think it is only a reminder to us that if you want to speak to the media you should not be in your full regalia as a lawyer it is proper to be in your tie and a shirt that you'll be able to speak. So I think we have all learned from it. I think that, um, yes, the courts was a little bit not too happy with Mr. Frank Davis because we all respect Mr. Frank Davis. He's a, a good lawyer when it comes to the bar. Um, but I think that he was being carried by emotions as to some of their communication and i think we we'll all learn shouldn't we that. say same about your team because you also you also do the address except that in your case we haven't seen a lawyer mentioned directly in the case addressing the media but in terms of the vibes that you give you also give similar no no i, I don't i remember i think that the all the vibe that were coming from our opponents were all about to bring the tarry image of our lead petitioner down in the eyes of the public that he doesn't know the law, he doesn't know anything. But all we have been saying that this man is a gem, he's tall when it comes to the bar, and he has paid his due. So we have a crack team, that's all. But I think it was becoming a personal, which we also didn't like that. It should be personal. We are lawyers. We will finish with this case and we'll still go back to the bar. So I think that, uh, for me, the most important thing for us as lawyers when we are communicating is that the public learn from us. They learn some of the jargon, whether right or wrong, they learn these jargons which they may not understand that it was not appropriate. So I think, yes, going forward, we have to be measured with what we say and how we communicate um, <clears throat> what happens in court. And I okay. think that... Yeah, so far, so good, apart from one or two slips that the court has pointed out. Justice Abdullah, it was a, uh, a double-edged, uh, passionate appeal from Justice Enin Yabua. The first was directly to Frank Davis. But the second leg, which I took notice of, was to say that for those who are not directly participating in the case, if you must address the media or make commentary, Put down your robes and your wig. Yesterday, I didn't see any wig, but they certainly were in their robes. Obviously, um, um, uh, it's, 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 it's sad to say that even though all sides appear to be saying that they took cue, it doesn't look like they took enough cue from the, from the bench. And, um, but I think that advice or caution um, affects all of us, including my good self here, um, to the extent that um, if I appear on your station or any other station, I should be appearing as I am today, um, or at best with a tie on, or any other clothing rather than a regalia that would make me look like a lawyer. Um, 
Um, I, I think it's, 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 your, your it's, training shirt is uh, making you nearly look like. <laughs> 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 today, I think Doc, Doc is really after me today. <laughs> but <laughs> how, I mean, with the greatest respect that I have for Doc, I, think I would always reserve my comment because Doc is a gem for me as well. So, <laughs> for <laughs> but um, like I said, probably, um, it, it, we all should take cue from that. We should all learn to play by the rules. Um, the rules are indeed abundantly clear. Um, um, I, it is sometimes difficult to say the circumstances under which a particular person may be made a victim. Um, I wouldn't want to be made a victim. Uh, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed. I wouldn't want to be caught pants down. And so I will strongly urge myself and my colleagues that we should all play by the rules. And um, we do not even need the Supreme Court to remind us of this because uh, ethics rules are abundantly clear as to how we conduct ourselves in these matters, particularly when our commentary and, and our conduct um, um, are such that they may even affect the determination of the matter. Um, it may also run into the realm of um, content. And so um, it's, I think, it, even you, the media, I think we should all, you should all be, be careful with, with the limits um, with which you can go or you go with your interviews and other things. I think so. Um, I think we should all take a cue from it. We clearly see the Supreme Court this time not being too hard on, the, on these matters, um, unlike what happened last um, in the last presidential elections where people had to go to prison because of contempt. Um, this time we are getting all the signals ahead of time that we should all take um, appropriate measures to keep ourselves from falling foul of the law. Okay, just about 30 seconds. What are your expectations today? We'll have another witness in the box. Indeed, um, I do not see um, any um, um, any miracles today. I probably foresee quite a boring day. Um, um, having read the 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 um, witness statement of um, Dr. Pesa White and and the line of questioning that happened yesterday, I do not foresee a lengthy um, 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 cross examination today. And indeed, I do not foresee um, the second petitioner in particular going into the details of the issues as, as they did with, with regards to the first petitioner, because really their whole um, petition is centered on the first respond, um, the first um, witness of, of the petitioner. That's why sometimes the lawyers call him the star witness. And so having had um, their day, um, I foresee a minor um, intru um, intrusion into, into the case today, okay. because there's no way the, the second respondent, for instance, is going to allow um, this, uh, this witness to undermine their case. And so what it means is that they will be very measured in the kind of question, the line of questioning, just so that he does not um, correct, if you want to call it so, the errors that, for instance, um, a student Katia probably might have done um, in, the, in his cross-examination or other things. Okay. So they will definitely attempt everything that will ensure that um, um, the kind of answers that are produced today are on the surface or and, and such that it will not go to the root to 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 undermine the case of the of the respondent. All and right. You, you can clearly see that happening. In fact, if you if you heard Doctor Edisa, he even hinted to I mean, on, on, on to that that clearly by their strategy they are not going to give this um, this doc the room to 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 as it were for their case for them. Okay. Definitely. You're not going to find that kind of questions there. Okay. All right. But you still say it's going to be a boring day. So, Dr. Poko, is it going to be boring? Would it be a boring cross-examination? Well, um, it doesn't need to be boring per se, but we will not let him be all over telling different stories than what he has filed in his witness statement. Okay. You know, what? and it is not meaty. So, a student here was supposed to have provided more meat for the case than Mr. Pesa White, because he was encountered in, in just a small room waiting for information to come. His narrative was that at some point, I decided to go away because I was sent to go and see the petitioner. And then when we went away, uh, the results were declared. So it was at the stage of Form 13. You know, they started from Form 10, 11, 12, 13. So all those forms, of 11 by like 10, 11, Mr. Pesawai can never speak to them. It was only in the strong room area 
That's where Ashir Dukatia parried some of the questions which you will be asked to respond to because he was there. And he cannot therefore say that Rachel Matununu was the one who only took the decision to sign. And therefore, it wasn't my decision. Okay, because so it was the two agents mm. representing the petitioner in this matter. Okay. Going forward, if you don't see the petitioner or his attorney um, on the witness stand, this case has collapsed. All right, so Akotampa won't take five hours cross examining him, I get the sense. Well, we'll take our time and make sure that his credibility, if it, because of the answers he's giving, are not accurate, we will confront him with it as well. All right. Kojoga Daudu, uh, this is, uh, as they say, not necessarily your star witness. What should be our expectation? I, I think that um, Dr. Kwesap White is coming to put and will highlight the, uh, the discretionary, the, <clears throat> the, way the discretionary power was used by the chairperson of the electoral commission he would also come and say what he knows in within his personal knowledge and i'm sure as a doctor cross-examination nobody can limit you um I, I get the impression that my colleague dr edu said it's saying that it is only what it's on your witness statement that you can speak to no, that's not the practice. Cross-examination, when they ask you and your questions, they can always be follow-up questions. And the follow-up questions... Yes, we will ask other questions that will so be uh, if, related to what he has filed, mainly. No, no, so if it is, in the no, no. So if it is their strategy that they will ask questions that will bring follow-up or answers that they will have to probe more, then that is their strategy. But I think that Dr. Pesapoit is going to say what he knows he and by talk that time, your case is closed because you're putting your case. So it means that you can't go okay. to the market. No, no, please, can we can we have some? When we were speaking, I didn't speak. So please, let me just finish. So I think that, yes, he'll be at his best. He's in good spirits. And I think he was even around yesterday uh, just to see that he'll be able to. And I know him. He will speak his uh, what he has put on and any question he'll be able to answer and answer. Properly. Okay. So I expect a very good day. All right. Uh, Kojoka Daudu, is there a reason we haven't seen the petition, I think, for the past uh, two sittings? No, you know, the, the petitioner um, had some few other emergency engagements that he had to do. So um, that is why, but he's ably represented by the running mate and the national chairman of the party, the top echelon of the party is okay. always in court. All right. So if you, yeah, if you check, you see that apart from him, the uh, running mate and the top echelon. We see, we see them. Court. We see them. I was just curious uh, because he had been there from day one. But thank you very much, Kojoga Daudu. Thank you to Dr. Poko Edusei. Oh, and I am super grateful, Justice Abdullah, for helping us with this conversation. Our election.